Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eurocon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Sunday, June 11th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 33 through 40, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Brethren, all the saints through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, received promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put former armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release. They might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and scourging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering over deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though well attested by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had foreseen something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 32 and 33, verses 37 through 38, and chapter 19, verses 27 through 30. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to his disciples, Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Then Peter said in reply, Lo, we have left everything and followed you. What then shall we have? Jesus said to them, Truly, I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man shall sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many that are first will be last, and the last first. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Today in the Orthodox Church, we remember all the saints. This is a very fitting celebration because it is immediately following the Feast of Pentecost, where we remember the descent of the Holy Spirit upon all of the people of God formed in the Church, and the saints would be those members of the church of various and sundry representations, apostles and bishops and martyrs and ascetics and unmercenary healers and lay people of great faith, all sorts of different people that have in some way, shape or form stood out in a way that points to obvious sanctity. You look at somebody and say, well, by their example in their lives, their example is inspirational and causes us to want to go and do likewise. Those people we would consider, at least in some way, for sainthood. And there are people in the Old Testament as well, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great patriarchs, great kings, the prophets, all of them as well. But today, we are called to be those people. God has manifested his gifts to each of us in various and sundry ways. Not all of us are the same. Some can teach, some can speak really well, some can sing, some are great administrators. Yes, even administrators are an important part of the life of the church. There are great you know, caregivers for children and, and caregivers for older adults and so on and so forth. So each of us has individual gifts that can be used for God's greater glory. And so that makes us part of the great tapestry that is the tradition of our faith. But one of the things that needs to be brought to mind 
is that we as God's people in this day and age should not put our lights under a bushel. We live in a time of great fracturing in our society. Just recently, there was a graduation party in the town that I serve where three children, 13, 14, and 15, were shot during the course of the celebration. So something that should have been joy gets turned into something of unspeakable tragedy. Now, what are we to do about something like that? How in the world can we, even though those people were not part of our church community, even though those people had come from a very different walk of life than the majority of the people that are here in this church, even though there's so many differences, what are we to do? Well, I mean, prayer is obvious. We pray. We pray for the well-being. We pray for the healing of the church. And in fact, let me show you some of the prayers that we do in the Divine Liturgy that speak to this kind of thing. These prayers are said silently after the gifts are blessed on the altar. The first one is one of my favorites. Again, we offer unto thee this rational worship for the whole world, for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, for those who live in chastity and lead a godly way of life, and for all civil authorities. Grant them, O Lord, peaceful times, that we in their tranquility may lead a calm and peaceful life in all godliness and sanctity. What a powerful prayer that is. One that we should always pray. Not, O oh Lord, let the government feel like I do. O oh Lord, let the government do what I want. No, it's nothing like that. It's just give them peaceful times, that in their peace we may be able to serve you, O oh God, in reverence and godliness. And then this other prayer that comes almost immediately after that. Be mindful, O Lord, of this city in which we dwell, of every city and countryside, and of those who in faith dwell therein. Be mindful, O Lord, of those who travel by sea, by land, and by air, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and their salvation. Be mindful, O Lord, of those who bear fruit and do good works in thy holy churches, and those who remember the poor. They are given separate credit. And upon us all, all of us, regardless of what we do, send forth thy mercies. So notice that even in the divine liturgy, we are not divorced from the community in which we live. So when families suffer in this community, we suffer. And when people are hurting in this community, we are hurting. We are not removed. We are not remote from these things. We do not pull away from them as if they don't matter, but only we do. This is the great mystery of the Orthodox Church and of Christianity in general. Who do we serve? I was asked this question recently. And the answer is quite simple. We serve everybody. We don't care what they look like. We don't care what they believe. We don't care what their ideologies are. We don't care what their skin color is. We do not care about any of that. All we know is that every human being is made in the image of God and aspires to God's likeness. That's what we know. Now our sacraments in the Orthodox Church are reserved for those who are members of the Orthodox Church. I'm sorry that it's exclusive. There are very strong reasons for this that we can talk about at a later time. But the majority is to receive strengthening and sustenance. It's important to know where everyone stands. We don't want to give something to someone who does not understand what they are doing. And so it's important for us as Orthodox Christians to make sure that people recognize that when they receive the sacraments, they are pledging to be loyal and obedient to the local bishop and also basically willing to care for every member in the community. More strongly put, each person is willing to die for the other in the church. Strong words. But when we receive communion, we are receiving the body and blood of Christ, which is a strong thing in and of itself. And so we have to take it seriously. We have to know what we are doing. Okay, so back to the point of the issue today. We are the saints of the church. We, as Christians of a reconciled community between God and humanity, need to proclaim this life-giving thing to the whole world. Because the world is beginning to show that it does not care for the value of human life. 
And you can look at that any way you want to. When people are willing to hurt other people, to not care how they feel, to not worry about those who are suffering around us, to have no empathy whatsoever, when we are willing to do that, the world indeed has become a dark place. And we, as Christ's people, are not a people of darkness. We are a people of light. And our light must so shine so that our works can be seen by those around us. I've said it quite frequently that love is infectious. And we need to show the world that there is a different message, a different way of life that treats humanity with dignity and respect, not as consumables, and certainly not as objects that can be just thrown away like you throw away yesterday's iPhone. It's a challenging time, there's no question. But we know that God is with us. And today, on this day, we remember the Feast of All Saints, and we aspire to add our names to their number. So may we be the people of light, to bear witness to a truth that is healing and reconciling, not destructive and violent. God help us, give us this strength, and help us to be a people of earnest prayer, to take care of the people around us, so that his name may be glorified to the ends of the world. Not an easy task, but God is with us, and if we support one another, there's no doubt that we can do the great things that Christ calls us to do. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to the channel. Better yet, if you have any questions or need any clarification or wish to add any comments whatsoever, please leave them in the section below. I'd like to have some interaction on this kind of issue. It's important. We need to know how to take care of one another. And may God bless and keep you and those that you love today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. And thank you very much for joining me today. You have a great day. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.